Hey everybody, it's Kate. Happy Friday afternoon to you. Today we are digging into postural strength and this is the sixth pillar. No, scratch that. Er, redo. This is the fifth pillar out of six. Next week's we get to the sixth pillar, but I will say today's pillar and next week's pillar also go hand in hand very much like how I was telling you about um, strong torso and strong uh, glutes and stable hips, how they all really marry together quite well and it's very difficult to pull them apart. Um, part of why I was thinking we were on the sixth pillar today is because we're going to be talking about some shoulder stuff in addition to postural strength. And the reality is they're like all enmeshed together. So <laughs> anyways, we're on number five. What's up everybody? My name is Kate and I'm going to be taking you through some of the most important things that you maybe don't know about postural strength and how to develop yours. And of course, we're ending with a joke today and it's legit good. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna get to that at the end. Uh, as always, drop your comments and questions uh, down below. We will answer those as we go along near the end. Um, and we are gonna get right into what I wanna teach you today. Um, also too, I've got my fun posture drawings ready to go. So this is really like a multimedia experience for you today. You are so welcome. You need it today on a Friday. Um, okay, so let's dive in first. So uh, postural strength, posture is, uh, important, obviously, and we all know about it. We all talk about it, and it's part of why it's one of one of the six pillars of the Unbreakable Body, my foundational strength and mobility program. Because over the years, as I would coach, I would see that it was crucially important that we got that in line with the right amount of mobility, the right amount of stability, and the right amount of strength, so that the person could go do the things they wanted to do. And so there's a whole uh, framework on that inside the Unbreakable Body. I'm going to be teaching you a couple of the lesser known things because. We've all heard about sitting up taller. We've all heard about better posture in the car and with our mobile device and all of these things. In fact, I still have to teach on that because it's still something that is worth discussing. However, there are some other things that are really beneficial to know about your postural strength and how to improve yours. And uh, I'm going to give you that today. Um, okay, so the first question that most everybody asks that I think we should just cover and get right out of the way quickly is this. The um, posture game. Is there a good and a bad? Is there a right and a wrong? So we've talked about this before. There is never a right or a wrong when it comes to your body. That's right and wrong is a judgment. Good and bad is a judgment. And there's no space for judgment when it comes to your body. Just plain and simple. There is what you are and what you'd like to become or what you maybe wouldn't like to become, right? So if you go, oh, I can't do any of the things that like she's talking about or whatever, like the next sentence does not need to be, I suck or I'm bad or I can't like I'm not good enough. None of that belongs here. So there is no such thing as good and bad posture. There's simply posture that is more stacked and aligned with your skeleton and your soft tissue and your joints. And there's posture that's less. Neither one is better or worse, but your body does become the accumulation of pathways and movements and repeated patterns. So if your repeated pattern is one that makes your spine not stay in a stacked position and you teach that enough times, you simply will reap the consequences of that. My dear friend Dallas Hartwick says this with regard to like nutrition stuff years and years ago. There's no good or bad. There's only consequences when it comes to food in that sense. The same is true for movement and posture. There is no good or bad, only consequences. And some of the consequences of rounding your shoulders all day and pulling your head forward or leaning your head to the side or leaning on your armrest in the middle of your car, all of these like common things that we do, the consequence that comes with that might be pain, discomfort, uneasiness, uh, weakness, lack of mobility, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can choose that though, if that's like what you want to have. What I'm saying though is those things aren't wrong, but simply like surround them with a bunch of other postures and positions that do support being stacked and aligned, right? That do support um, really healthy joint range of motion, okay? So there is no good or bad. They're simply collections of patterns and postures and positions. And I think this is possibly why um, one of the most popular quotes that people send back to me after they read the movement manifesto of my book, um, this seems to resonate the most with a lot of people. And the quote is this, your body becomes the visible leftovers of time gone by, which is really true, right? Do you remember when you got your first like wrinkle lines on your forehead and you were like, whoa, life, it's happening. Oh my gosh. Or maybe yours wasn't quite as like excited as mine was. Maybe it was a little more despairing, but nonetheless, you should be excited because life is happening to you and you get to respond to it. So we are the collection, literally the physical manifestation of time gone by. 
there's something poetic and beautiful about that, 100%. Um, and also, too, it's pretty empowering when you realize, oh, I can change what I'm doing during time as it goes by, and that will change the physical manifestation of my body. That's amazing. Like, wow, talk about being able to really like create the thing that you want for your body and your life and so on and so forth. Um, and so your posture, if it's lending itself to avoid pain in your neck, for example, because like these muscles, a lot of people get real tight through here, right? If your posture lends itself to that not happening, cool, you're creating that for your life. And if your posture doesn't lend itself to that, then you're also creating that. So it's a simple redirect. You go, oh, I am having neck and shoulder pain. What do I need to do to change that so I can actually stop having neck and shoulder pain? Doesn't mean you never ever again, like put your head down as you're like typing on your phone, but it might mean that you spend more of your time in different positions, right? So, okay, so let's get right into those. Okay, so, um, Let's start first with what like strong posture, stacked posture looks like. Hi, here are my drawings. If you've never seen these, prepare to be mind blown or not. Okay, so hi, here's our little dude. We gotta name this guy because I'm gonna be using him again in the future. All right, so this little dude is showing kind of stacked and aligned posture. All right, so if we drew a plumb line from his ear down through the center of his shoulder, through the iliac crest, which is kind of that pointy bit on the side of your hip that you can feel it if you put your hands on your hips, uh, and then the center of the knee, and then the malleolus down at the ankle, um, it should draw a straight perpendicular line to the floor, right? Okay. This is one version, one of many postures that aren't stacked so well. Okay. Check that. Mm, he's so sad. Okay. So this guy is really sad because his hips, as you can see, are in front of his shoulder and even his knee and his ankle. And this guy is going to be dealing with um, the, the the consequences of that, right? Um, one of which, and, and why people think, they all think posture up here, right? But it's a full body thing. One of the things this guy deals with, possibly, is uh, tightness, feelings of tightness and tension and stiffness and lack of mobility in his lower body. Because his body isn't stacked perpendicular to the ground and gravity is always pushing down on us. And your body's job, its desire in life is to support you and to help you keep upright. And so it will do anything to make that happen, including create lots and lots of tension in your thighs uh, or the backs of your thighs or your calves uh, or even your feet to help prevent you from falling over, which this dude, okay, if he doesn't have that, he's going to have a really hard time uh, standing upright. So not bad if you want to stand like this once in a while, but like, is that what you want to teach your body and make it pattern itself as? That's the question you have to ask yourself. Okay, so how do we get more to this guy? How do we make sure we do this more often, right? So we've all heard that like, you know, uh, setting your shoulders, getting your head in a better position, yada, yada, yada. Like you guys have seen that. And if you haven't, um, take my workshop, um, Kiss Neck and Shoulder Tension Goodbye. Uh, that's free to attend. I host, I host them every week. Next one is next Monday night, US time. Um, learn like the basics, right? Get that down. Okay. But we're going to get into three things today that are not like most common things that you would talk about. One shoulder internal rotation. So I'm on my phone right now. So I'm going to use actually like, Oh, here we go. My little card. Sweet. Perfect. Um, I have these little like Oracle tree cards. How cool are these? This was one from today. Beam. Anyways, it's just like something to think about. Anyways, I'm going to use this as my phone. Okay. So you can do this when you're like texting on your phone, right? Like rounded shoulders forward here. I'll back up a little bit. Rounded shoulders forward, head turkey up. You totally can, okay? And when you're on your computer, if this is my computer keyboard now, I'm typing on my keyboard, or if it's maybe a little lower, or maybe a little higher, depending on if you're standing or sitting, uh, same thing, that's totally fine. Both of those, though, uh, do require you to move into some internal rotation of your shoulder joint. And people get confused on what internal rotation is. So internal rotation is not the shoulders, like the shoulder girdle coming up and forward. That might be part of internal rotation, but that's not exclusively what it is. I'm going to show you what it is. That rounding of the shoulders is also you elevating your scapula, the shoulder blade back here, and your, your collarbone, your clavicle in the front, and the shoulder joint up to the sky. So that, that's that happening. Um, and it's also internal rotation of your shoulder, which is more this. Okay, so I'm going to show you from the side so you can actually see the part I want you to see. So we're going to, my arm is totally straight, okay? So this is internal, let me turn you here. Hi, hi, okay. Internal rotation of the shoulder. And then back to external rotation. So there's an element of this, okay? Humeral head meeting the shoulder joint, okay? Glenohumeral joints in there, acromioclavicular joints in the front, scapulothoracic is in the back. 
there's an element of this that's happening when you're like texting on your phone. There's an element of that. And so most people will say, oh yeah, you need to get rid of your internal rotation. You need to externally rotate. You need to go more to that stuff. Yes. And there's a whole other element to that. So I've talked about this with neural control before. With your joints, if your brain and nervous system do not understand how to actually control the entire range, it will start to disallow some of the range from you because it knows it's not safe uh, because you don't have the ability to actually control it. So while you may be in some slight internal rotation while you're on a computer or your mobile device, uh, you're not in an excessive amount of internal rotation that you need to get rid of forever. What you are in, though, is a small amount of internal rotation and external rotation. So if you have this like big ability, like I was just showing you, internal external rotation, you have this much, let's say. And when you're typing on a computer or mobile device, you're using that much of your internal rotation. What is left is all of this that your brain is like, oh, we're not practicing it, we don't know how to use it, like shut it down. So if we were to take you, I'm gonna take you to the floor right now. If we were to go test your shoulder internal rotation, let me see here how we can do this. Yeah, we'll do it this way, okay. All right, I need a bigger phone so I can actually have a bigger screen for you guys. Okay, or a bigger camera, I should say. All right, so if I were to have you on the floor and I were gonna evaluate your internal rotation and we were gonna internally rotate your shoulder and it only goes to here, like that's a huge opportunity because it should have quite a bit more internal rotation. And this is something that like a professional can help you with and evaluate for yourself, figuring out how much internal and external rotation your shoulder joint has. But if I were, if you were my client, I were to go, well, you can't really internal rotate your shoulder. I wouldn't expect you to actually have healthy shoulders that feel good. I wouldn't. And shoulders are a part of having strong posture because if these guys don't sit well, like good luck with the rest of this, okay? So with shoulder internal rotation, it's about expanding it and actually developing complete rotation of your shoulder joint in addition to being able to like lift it overhead and reach it behind you and do things with it out to the side and cross over your body without pain. And so the reality is most folks aren't getting to practice that. And so expanding your ability to actually rotate the shoulder joint that is like the most flexible joint you have and capable of so much range of motion Actually expanding that is going to help you have more natural stacked posture throughout the day without having to work for it, okay? And if you have questions about how to improve on some of these things, like I said, you guys, it is a worthy investment in your time and your money to get a book, do some learning, hire a coach, go to a program, go to a workshop, get something to help you get better because if it makes you feel better, like your entire life gets better. So that is a worthy use of your time, right? Okay, so shoulder internal rotation. We, that's the first one we wanna cover. So it's not that you're doing too much of it or that you need to undo it. It's that you need to expand the entire range. Those of you who are um, readers of the Movement Manifesto, you've gotten the daily movements series. In that is a shoulder drill that will help you start to expand your shoulder uh, internal and external rotation. Um, and then also too, uh, if you follow along as I'm showing things on Instagram, there are frequently posts about shoulders that will help you understand more about shoulder internal and external rotation. But suffice to say, if you were to go to the mirror right now and you were trying to internally rotate your shoulder as far as you can before you run out of room, if you don't have a significant and sizable range of how far you can internally and externally rotate your shoulder, start there. Okay, number two, spinal articulations. So your spine is made up of 33 vertebrae and all of them are built and designed to be able to articulate to some degree or another. And unfortunately, modern life doesn't require you to move very much through your spine. I'm gonna show you a couple of spinal articulations today. So when your spine doesn't have to do it during the day, what do you get left over? lack of movement because again your brain goes well we're not using it so we're not going to maintain it and you end up locking down in places where you should still have movement variability and this is something that we know for sure when it comes to overuse injuries if you lose movement variability meaning your window to move was this big it now becomes this big if you lose that and that shrinks down you also increase your risk for overuse injuries because your body has less pathways than it did before. And so now it's going to use those same pathways that it has left over and over and over again. And in time, those tissues go, hey, we're, we're getting worked way more than we're prepared for and then we're built to stand and sustain, we're done. And that's when you're gonna get a pain signal or some sort of like compensatory factor that kicks in. Not to mention you're gonna lose power because you're not tapping into all of the other tissue that you have and you're only using three or four tissues, let's say, out of 
3 million that you might have access to. Those are just guesses numbers. Like we, there's a lot of tissues in your body. You get my point. Okay, so spinal articulation. How do you bring yours back? Well, you practice it every single day. And it's not enough just to do back bends in your yoga class, although that can be fun and helpful too. It's not enough to just do um, side bends after you stand up, after sitting in the car for a long time. You have to deliberately and intentionally move your spine focusing on the areas where you don't move well. All right, I'm going to show you one right now. All right, so what we're going to do, I'm going to try to get my hair out of the way so that you can see the entire spine. Okay, so let's go with this height to start. All right, I purposely wore this shirt so you can see my spine move today. All right, so our spine, and I am no belly dancer. I'm just going to say that right now, okay? So don't laugh. All right, so with your spine, you should be able to flex and extend, laterally flex, and then also rotate through a variety of positions, okay? So what we do often though is we go, I'm really good at laterally flexing right here. So I'll just do that spot again and again. What you should try to do is learn how to use all of this to laterally flex and be able to use each joint on its own uh, or whatever direction you're going. So I'm gonna do some lateral flexion with rotation of the spine, showing it in two ways. First way here, upright, nice and tall. All right, so from this position, I'm going to see, let's see, arms are kind of in the way, but that's okay, you'll get the idea. All right, so we're going to uh, flex the spine down, so I'm gonna round my spine. I'll show this from the side too, you'll see. And then I'm gonna try to take just my like lower thoracic, kind of just below my rib cage, and see if I can flex and rotate around that one joint. So we're gonna go from here, here we go. And then down over to the other one, flex round forward. So now I'm going to go up a little higher so we can do it more like there's the bottom of the rib cage. Now I'm going to do it from here. See if I can flex, come up and around and down. So from the side, here we go. Okay, check this out. So we're going to slightly flex forward. Hey, let's get on screen, Kate. Let's slightly flex forward. Okay, curl up and around, down to the other side and around. Reversing it. Lateral flex, rotating around this vertebrae here, up and around, and down. Then I'm gonna move up and do a little bit higher. So, can I articulate a little bit higher? And these moves are small and subtle, but that's the point. If you can't do them, you end up having to use other muscles. Things like, everybody know like low back pain? Yeah, like the QL down here, having to do all of this work to laterally flex you when really you've got all of these vertebrae up in here that can do it as well. Okay, here's another one we're going to do. Uh, you've seen this if you follow me or any of the other mover people on Instagram, cat-cow articulations. So being able to actually extend and flex your spine one vertebrae at a time. So let's actually go. <laughs> yeah, let's go down here. Okay, here we go. All right, this will be nice and slow. Looks like nothing's happening for like the first five seconds at least. We're gonna be starting at the sacrum and going into extension all the way up to the cervical spine. Here we go. up to cervical and then I'm going to bring it back cervical into flexion back into thoracic one at a time trying to move each of the vertebrae back to that neutral position that I started in and back down and around okay that's a simple one you can try on your own both of those are actually hi back on camera um if you can't do that, you've got some huge opportunities, and I'm also not surprised if you get back pain. So, um, your body needs to be able to move that well. It does take time. Yes, it takes time while you're doing it every day, but also, too, it takes time for it to change. So, if you are doing something like what I just showed you and trying to, like, articulate your spine like a snake slithering around, and you find, oh, yeah, I'm really good at the lumbar, and then I get to my thoracic, my mid and upper spine, and I go, oh, yeah, it all just moves as one, like, lump, that's a huge opportunity. Huge. Huge. Like, that is... That's as cool of a goal to achieve as like a squat PR. Like you're getting in more control of your body and getting better connected to your body. How much cooler does it get than that? Like, dude, seriously. So anyways. 
that's that. Number two, spinal articulation. You need to have more. You don't use enough of it during your day. I'll guarantee you that most of us, the most amount of spinal articulation we do is to like lean over on the armrest on the car, right? Or to round into the side of the couch or to like slump back into flexion in our chair behind us. That's not enough. This spine not only needs to move well to avoid pain, but also to send good blood flow and send healthy blood to your tissues in your body. Remember, blood shuttles good nutrients to your body and bad nutrients, good and bad, you know what I mean, healthy nutrients and shuttles away the junk, all right? So it shuttles away the junk. So like when you're injured, we want to pump blood through that system so we can get the icky like rehab stuff out of there and get your new tissues in there. Same is true for your spine. Okay, number three, neck tissue. I want to introduce you to your SCM, your sternocleidomastoid. So your sternocleidomastoid is this guy right here. Mine are pretty prominent because I just do stuff that uses them all the time. If you're not super like athletically driven, you may have a harder time finding these, but they're in there. So I'm going to show you how to find yours and palpate it. So what you're going to do, it's hard to do this while you're talking because this guy's moving around. But what you're going to do is find the tissue just above your collarbone that's thick. And so if you take your fingers and like kind of just push in a bit, and then slowly start to grab on, there we go, you'll find your SCM. And you're, I want you to grab that and just squeeze it as you go up, just gently. You can push a little harder, but not too hard, okay? Just gently squeeze it, see what it feels like. If it's really, really tender, you got some data. What a cool piece of data you got. Your SCM muscles are like all fired up. And remember, we know that soft tissue work isn't the end all be all. This squeezing this alone to like quote massage it is not going to like change how it functions, but it does feel nice, right? Or maybe it hurts a little bit. Anyways, either way, it's not so bad. Soft tissue work helps start off the process, but then you have to follow it up with what I'm going to show you next. So anyways, you'll do that on both sides. Your SEMs run down both sides of your neck. They get all jacked up because people are pulling their head forward and not moving their head through a complete range. And we should be gentle with our neck, yes. However, many of us, myself included, were told over the years, don't ever like move your neck like in big circles or like extend it very far. Okay, but this, it's built to do that, and you can do that. And I think not doing that creates more problems than not. So moving your neck through a range, like what I'm about to show you, can really help change the quality of this tissue and actually not make the SCMs do so much work or be so weak or whatever your specific issue is. Okay, so we're gonna do one that looks super goofy. So everybody, if you're in an office, I want you to like draw attention to yourself while we do this. No, I'm just kidding. You can do it in the private of your office. Okay, so what we're gonna do is a double chin to a turtle head. Looks like this. So from our starting position, we're gonna make a double chin. Isn't that cute? Don't we all look so cute when we do that? We should like get our driver's license photos taken that way. Okay, so <laughs> neutral head, double chin. So I'm drawing back to give myself a double chin, keep the mouth closed because this is not a double chin, it's this. Okay, and then we're gonna make a turtle head. We're gonna jut that head forward. Like a little turtle poking his head out. Forward and then back. And then I want you to do them alternating. Double chin, turtle head. Double chin, turtle head. And notice how much of the rest of your body is moving and how does it feel. That's all really excellent data to gather and then use it to go on a journey of like self-discovery, which is what this whole thing is all about, really. Um, okay, so your neck tissue can certainly be influenced by you using it or not using it. That's not using it enough or using it kind of exclusively one way and not all of the other ways. I teach a whole lot more about neck and shoulders in my workshop that I mentioned earlier, how to kiss neck and shoulder tension goodbye. Um, you can learn more about that on the Facebook page that you're on right now watching this. Um, so anyway, so that's number three. Okay, so um, last thing I wanna say about posture, then we're gonna get to the joke today. So with posture, it's not just about pulling your shoulders back and down. It's about really looking at you how, at how you're living your entire life and what signals you're sending to yourself. Yes, getting better neck position, um, learning to stack more through your neck and shoulders, learning to articulate your spine, increasing the internal and external range of your shoulder joint, those are all really helpful and beneficial. Also too, don't forget, you do need to be strong. You need to support and stack yourself and lift yourself up and be able to meet the demands of your day. And so doing things like um, TRX rows or ring rows or uh, bent over rows or any of the body weight neural control drills that like I've shown over the last several months on Instagram for your shoulders and your back, um, like those are really valuable and important to be doing as well. So don't think that it's simply about changing your habits, your external environment. That's really important. But also too, like 
I want you to be a strong, capable individual. And that does mean you're going to need to spend some time challenging your body to respond to a stimulus greater than what you're currently capable of, like what you do in your weight training. Okay. So, uh, and that too, also uh, somebody asked me this on email too, like, how do you know when you should get a coach? You should get a coach as soon as you feel like I don't really know how to get to the next level on my own. That's when you should get a coach. Okay. All right. So, um, we do have a joke today. We're going to get to that in a second. I also want to remind you about the Unbreakable Body Workshop coming up in Chicago. Well, we will cover all of this and then some uh, up at CrossFit Turbine. You can learn more about that at fitforreallife.com. All right, so let's get to our, uh, our, our comments and questions here today. Okay, Tom says... <laughs> Okay, Tom's asking about skin being uh, sensitive, causing a lot of pain, can't move like more normal most days of the week. Um, that's tough. Okay, so a couple of things. Remember too, folks, that like skin needs to have glide like around the tissue and you have lymph, which also requires a very light touch as you're working through here, but it's usually about the, ten the density of a nickel pushing is not all you need to get into the lymph. Uh, then also you've got fascial layers to explore. That's something a manual therapist should be doing with you. You shouldn't be doing that on your own simply because you don't know how to actually tackle fascia the way a manual release therapist is going to be able to do that. And functionalanatomyseminars.com is how you can find an FR therapist in your area to help you with that. Uh, then, then you get down to the layers of muscle, tendon, tissue, uh, ligament, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I would say starting with something that is soothing to your day. So whether that's like a warm compress on your neck, uh, and your shoulders, uh, or very light massage while you maybe listen to a podcast or music you really enjoy. Um, and then going into very, very small light movement. So for somebody who's in a lot of pain when they first wake up, whether that's skin level pain or deeper, like more neck and shoulder, like deep tension and tightness is to start very slow and small. So something like just starting to turn your head a few degrees to the left and the right and kind of welcoming in whatever degrees of expansion you can get as you go through that. Even something as simple as that can signal to your brain we're safe, which is crucially important, uh, will allow this. Uh, and then that we're not forcing something, that we're not ramping up the, uh, the SNS to fire up that fight or flight response of like having to respond to something intense, um, that you're not really ramping that up. So when I do my morning movement routine, lights are off. I've got my uh, salt crystal lamp on. So it's the only light in the room. It's kind of an amber light. It's really dark. Um, I put on like Alan Watts or some meditative music or something like that. That's really chill and soothing and lets me just get in my head. Um, and then I go through my daily movement series, most of which are in the movement manifesto book series, uh, video series that come with it. But then also I kind of play with like whatever feels like it needs it that day as well too. But that takes 15 minutes and then I'm ready to kind of like turn the lights on, make some coffee, start some of the day. It allows you to like ease into your day much simpler on your body than um, getting up and jumping right into a painful foam rolling session or some sort of intense activity. So I'd encourage you to explore how you can put that something like that into your life um, and then go from there. Okay. Uh, yes, it is possible to learn. Alex is asking, is it possible to learn FRC remotely without a physical coach? Yep. That's what I do. That is how I spend my entire day. Having done this for 14 years now, I've learned a lot about how to work with folks in a variety of settings. The vast majority, 99% of the people I get to coach these days are through Skype. And you actually can learn um, like neural control, neural drive, and postural positional things like what FRC teaches you uh, doing it over Skype. So if that is something you're interested in, uh, connect with this coach that, you're, you, that you resonate with because that's the most important part of it, that you have a good relationship with them and a good connection. Um, and if if I'm that person for you, awesome, cool. You can send me a message over on the fitforreallife.com page on the coaching page. If it's not me, that's totally cool too. Like you'll find somebody that works totally awesome and right for you, um, whether it's on Skype or in person. So yes, okay. Are we ready for a joke? I'm so glad there's a bunch of you here right now. All right. I kind of can't wait. As you know, I try not to laugh as I'm telling these, but I don't know today. This is going to be kind of tough. All right, here we go. Today's joke <laughs> is located in the forest. Okay. So our scene opens with Mike the tree viewing quite a scene. Frank the tree is laying across the forest floor and everything looks uncomfortably, uneasy, unnerved, not happy. The bushes are looking trembly. Mike is aghast. Nobody's saying a word. So Mike the tree turns to the police officer who has now arrived on scene 
and says, What has happened to Frank? What has happened here? What, what has happened to Frank the tree? And the police officer turns to him and says, I've asked around, but nobody heard anything. Because <laughs> he's a tree. And you fell in the forest. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know, right? They're such groaners. But like you guys, you get to go tell these people and then they get to groan. And that's the joy of the entire thing. That you all go, oh man. And then you get to go, ha ha, I made you listen through that. That's so awesome. Thank you, Sarah. All right, you guys. Have a phenomenal rest of your day. Thank you so much as always. Next week we are on pillar six, which is scapular stability. And it is going to tether into everything we've talked about today too. Go dominate your life and like set some awesome patterns for your body, would you? This has been Kate. Have a phenomenal day.